Hello and welcome to another segment of DSU Inside Perspective. I'm Carlos Holmes and this is the show where we talk with faculty, staff, students, alumni, and guests about some of the things that are going on in the world or some of the great things that are going on here at Delaware State University. Today I have Asha uh, Moses, who is a sophomore mass communications major, and we're here to talk about the movie Selma. She's seen the movie. I've seen the movie, and most importantly, Delaware State University is bringing the movie right here to campus on February 25th, which is a Wednesday at 6 p.m., and it will be screened that night in the Education and Humanities Theater, and then it will show again the following day on Thursday, February 26th, uh, in the EH building, no, not the EH building, the Martin Luther King Student Center, parlors B and C at 6 p.m. as well. Uh, Asha, you saw the movie, and yes. I'd be interesting to hear your perspective of it. What did you think after you saw the movie, when you sat, about, sat around and thought about what you saw? Overall, I thought that it was very poignant for this day and time, you know, with everything going on in the world, with um, the Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm. and um, just how relevant the movie was to this time, and how much work that we seem to have yet to do, and how much work we still have to do in um, the subject of civil rights. Mm -hmm. And I just felt as though it was um, very insightful, kind of, it, for me, it humanized Martin Luther King in a way, and it also bought another piece of the movement, except, except for, you know, the March on Washington or Martin Luther King's death. It gave us more of a look at something else that maybe we have not seen as much mm -hmm. you know, in history books. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the actor David Ayelowo? I was very pleased by his um, uh, portrayal of Dr. Martin Luther King. I think as, I didn't know this as a British actor, how he really got into the character of this Southern American preacher and if you look back at Martin Luther King's speeches and the way he portrayed, he did a very good job in his, you know, discernment of the character. Doc, Dr. Martin Luther King was very, you know, discerned and he seemed to be very, not so much chilled, but very calculating and very calm. And I like how he, you know, brought that out in his character. So I thought he did a very good job. Now we're going to have one of those Cisco and Ebert moments here because I don't, I'm, not, I'm not totally seeing eye to eye with you. Yes, there. I, I do know. find it interesting anytime, you know, you can be British and then yes. you can play an American character. Um, but um, and we had four actors in this movie: Tom mm -hmm. Wilkinson, who played Lyndon B. Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Carmen Ojogo, I believe pronounced yes, her name, who played Coretta, Coretta Scott. Scott King for the mm -hmm. second time in her career. Uh, and uh, there was another guy that played George Wallace, who was British, British. Um, and, and pretty much uh, Wilkerson carried it off really well. However, that's a pretty high calling to play Martin Luther King. And <clears throat> I think there's some really great importances with this movie, mm -hmm. okay? But one of them is not that it's a defining portrayal of Martin Luther King. Now, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, I think that there were some problems with the script with respect to what they could do with it, uh, what they could do with Martin Luther King's speeches. I do know that um, they went into negotiations with DreamWorks that had bought the rights to Martin Luther King's speeches from the King estate, uh, which, have, which, which are planning another project with Steven Spielberg. And they weren't able to get the rights for the speeches. So they had to rewrite all of Martin Luther King's speeches. So we really didn't get the bona fide Martin Luther King speeches that were given during that uh, voting rights march period. Um, and so that was a problem. That really wasn't the actor's fault. But uh, I don't know. He just, I, I didn't, I wasn't feeling Martin Luther King when I saw him. But having said that, the more important part of the movie to me is to be able to show how people sacrifice personal safety to be involved in this, uh, to be a part of the marches. And this is a, this is a movie that kind of shows it basically like it was. They went out, marched, 
and they were assaulted. They went out and marched mm -hmm. again. They were assaulted. Now, let me ask you a question. If you had been here or been in Selma in 1965 and amid the voting rights issues that they had back then, and you were confronted with the choice of participating in those marches, knowing the danger that they presented, what would have been your choice? You know, I ponder this question. Even after the movie, I thought, you know, well, if I was in that situation, if I had the choice to march, would I march? And the question is definitely yes. I'm not saying that, as you know, just so I can sound right or politically correct, but I'm saying that because I think it would have been my duty or my obligation to march. Think of it, you did not have the right to vote as a citizen of America, and think of it, you have to vote for legislation, for whoever's in office at the time, and if those people are not for you, they're not gonna make any kind of laws, any legislation for you, so therefore, whatever you want to be will not be. And I know I would not want my children or my children's children to go through what I had to go through. So I feel like it's, it's my obligation. Yes, I might get hurt. Yes, I might be even killed. But the fact that I don't have the rights, I'm, what am I living for if I'm just going day by day, you know, half of the person that I, I could be. So yes, I might fall or I might get hurt, but think of the child that w will be able to vote one day when they're of age, mm -hmm. that if I didn't march or if a bunch of us said, well, I'm not trying to get killed, we would all have just been, you know, riding it out, not living up to our full potential, not getting what we really needed mm -hmm. and being killed anyways because they killed for the littlest thing. So it would be my obligation because no matter if I sit down and be quiet or if I stand up and shout, I'm going to be looked at, you know, wrongly anyways. If I, at least if I get hurt or die for a cause that I know in my heart of hearts will one day be solved, that will make all the difference. Let me give some facts. The movie was directed by Ava DuVernay. It was her second feature film. and She'd done some other shorter things. Uh, I was surprised to realize I'd actually gone to a, a conference where she spoke at mm -hmm. a few years ago when she uh, did the movie Middle of Nowhere. Um, uh, this movie has received four Golden Globe nominations, including Best Motion Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, and Best Original Song. It's also received uh, nominations from the Academy Awards for Best uh, Picture and Best Original Song. This was a $20 million budget, and right now in Dover, it's not showing in Dover anymore. This is February 12th, uh, 2015, and it's not showing in Dover. It showed pretty much in January and I think maybe the first week in February. It has grossed $48 million now, so it's kind of done double, over double of what the budget was for the movies. Um, there have been some issues raised about the historical accuracy of this movie. And, uh, and that happens with a lot of history-based movies, such as uh, uh, Malcolm X, JFK. Uh, there's always some controversy over whether it was historically accurate or not, or did, was, did the filmmaker play loose and fast with some of the facts. Um, without trying to give too much away in the movie, uh, I think it's worth paying attention to um, to some specific information uh, as it's given in the movie with respect to the marches and how things happen or why they didn't happen. And I think it's wise for people to go back and research to find out the accurate information. But let me ask you, what is your expectation when you go to a movie like this? Do you think it's okay for the filmmaker to play loose and fast with some historical facts? Or do you think they ought to stick to the historical accuracy of the story? Now, that was my only one little discrepancy about the film was that um, it might not have all been accurate for the, I guess, the time um, limit or, you know, the creative um, feel she felt. But I personally feel like you have to be, you know, accurate when it comes to history because a lot of people especially in black history, we don't, our history is not put out there all the time. So whenever you have the chance as a filmmaker 
or have any kind of outlet to put the history out there, I think you should be accurate because some people not, may not see it in a book or in a documentary at school. So I feel as though when you are doing a play, it's your, again, an obligation to be historically accurate so that people have a chance to get their history. I feel as though a lot of people, this could have been a chance to, and this was really a chance to see what happened in our history. Mm -hmm. And so I feel as though, even though it was a wonderful movie, I feel as though she should have stuck, stuck to the accuracy of the events happening. And I understand that sometimes with the liberty of whoever they ha have to like, well, you can't do this, so mm -hmm. you can't show this part or have this speech in there. I understand that, and it must be hard to put that together and to have a historical movie, you know. Um, now, on the plus know. side, though, we must say that they do give you the players. Yeah. You, you've got to, if you, if you weren't familiar with the players or those that have read up on Martin Luther King's history and read up on the voting rights marches, they'll see the players that were there, Ralph Abernathy, mm -hmm. Andrew Young, uh, James Bevel, uh, um, um, uh, Fred Gray, uh, the, the other guys like Lyndon Johnson okay. and George Wallace, uh, uh, the, 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 the cops that were there. And, you know, some of the people, uh, Lewis, the legislator, yep. Uh, he's in that. Uh, so it, it, those are representative of the people that really took place there. And I think it's an important movie to see. What do you think? I think it's a very important movie to see. You also see the, um, the unity of people, black, white, Jewish, everyone who just came together and knew that this was wrong, about how important it is to be televised. I think, I know as a film um, major, the importance of the media, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. how this wasn't being shown until someone, until some kind of outlet, they made sure that an outlet saw what was happening and so people could say, whoa, this is actually happening people get somewhere. Beat. somewhere some people getting beat mercilessly mm -hmm. and so people came out in cars of everything. As you can see, the, there was a, um, I forgot the rabbi's name, I looked him up, but um, a rabbi who worked closely with Martin Luther King throughout the entire march was mm -hmm. there and it showed the black and Jewish relations in America, which I think is very important to mm -hmm. know. And I think mm -hmm. that was also one of the criticisms of the movie that they didn't show enough of the black and Jewish relations because there were black and Jewish relations all throughout the march. Right, right. And I also think that um, it was very poignant that they put um, the people who really helped Martin Luther King throughout the way um, on his march and people that you don't see but who are very important in history um, there was the, um, the white clergyman who was killed, and I, mm -hmm. my mother talked to me about the woman who, um, after she drove, um, I think her name was Velma, after she drove people to their houses after the march, she herself was killed. And I'm, I'm not trying to give too much away about the movie, but mm -hmm. that is history that you mm -hmm. can look at right, yourself. Right, right, right. But um, I think it's important that we also see like the, how people came together to mm -hmm. see, the, to you know, join this march and to join the fight for what they knew was wrong. Yeah. Well, you know, this is going to be screened here at Delaware State University. If you miss out, you have nobody to blame for it yourself because they're showing it two nights, okay? They're showing it on Wednesday, February 25th at 6 p.m. in the EH Theater, and they're showing it on Thursday, February 26th at 6 p.m. in the Martin Luther King Student Center Parlors B and C. Free. It's not going to cost you a dime. Your university is looking out for you. So we hope that you take advantage of this fear. We hope that you look at it and that you look at it critically because it is important history. I should thank you so much for joining me for thank that. You. And thank you so much for your perspective. Thank and you. thank you for joining us for another episode of DSU Inside Perspective. Y'all have a good day.